Is Zero Calibre the best VR shooter? No, not really. Thanks for watching and remember to subscribe. So it might not be the best, but it's still one of the few VR shooters that's actually trying to emulate popular non-VR games like Call of Duty and Battlefield. With levels that you go through in a linear way, shooting human enemies who actually take cover and shoot back with some cool little moments. Surprisingly, even after five years of consumer VR, this is still a rare thing. You can also play through the entire thing up to four player co-op and PvP is in the works and should be with us before the end of the year. This will make it the complete package. It's not perfect though, it has a few rough edges that need polishing which is understandable as it's still in early access and it's being made by a small indie studio. So let's start with the visuals. They actually look pretty good. Some areas look worse than others, especially the outdoor areas with some low poly rocks and shrubbery and some low resolution textures. Things like vehicles and interior stuff look good overall, probably because a lot of this stuff was bought on the Unreal Asset Store. They are plenty good enough to enjoy the game in my opinion, but could be better. The game runs really well though. Even on Ultra, I only saw 70% GPU usage, but I am using an RTX 3080. I've heard from people with lower spec hardware that it runs well for them as well. I will say though, that running on anything other than Ultra, I did experience some annoying popping. You still get some of it in Ultra, but it isn't anywhere near as distracting. The levels themselves are good, with 8 missions and more in the works. They're going to take you about 15 to 30 minutes each to complete, and playing through each mission once on medium with AI squad mates took me about three and a half hours. It will definitely take you longer if you're playing hard, especially if you turn squad mates off so you're alone. There is a good variety of environments for each mission with a couple of night levels, some in the countryside, one in some rocky canyons. Some of my highlights include one in the snow. There's a large tanker which looks great and you've got snowflakes dropping down which looks really good. You have to push up a hill to take a communication tower and then you have to defend against enemies using a mounted turret until some planes swoop in and bomb the place. Another has you start underground breaching a large prison. You have to go in and out of buildings, across courtyards and finish up in the back of a Chinook shooting enemies as you fly out. My absolute favourite though is one called No Man's Land, where you have to push from one side to the other to get some data from a bunker, then you go back across again. It's set in the late evening with a heavy thunderstorm, you've got lightning flashing, heavy rain obscuring your vision and mortar strikes dropping around you. It's got a really gritty feel to it and it's how I was personally hoping the D-Day landings in Medal of Honor would feel. I think the main thing I would like to see is some more variety to the actual gameplay because ultimately you're going from one point to another shooting people along the way. There isn't really any different types of enemies, there's no boss fights. I think a couple of more open kind of sandbox type levels would be good. One could be in a tropics environment like Far Cry 3, you have a large compound you have to infiltrate. You can have one player as a sniper, as overwatch and then the others go in. The ability to get through the level without being detected and being stealthy with silencers would be really awesome. Maybe another where you have a large building you have to breach and clear. Kind of like with Rainbow Six Siege Terrorist Hunt. You can go at it from multiple angles, breaching the house and moving through room to room. The enemy AI is okay. It's not great, but I know how difficult really good AI is to actually pull off. Even the Call of Duty single player campaigns has never had great AI. The enemies will take cover sometimes, sometimes they'll rush you, they dive out of the way if you fire close to them, and sometimes they run back to get some distance. They're okay. They like to comment on your oral hygiene sometimes. Try And seem obsessed with the parents reproducing. We need more brothers! If you play with AI squad mates, then they will kill enemies and they get killed. They don't get in the way too much, and they help draw fire away from you, making the game easier. So turn them off and play on hard if you want a challenge. They can sometimes get stuck on stuff though. The best part of this game is playing with friends in co-op. And as you play through the levels, you get XP which ranks you up and unlocks more weapons, attachments, outfits and gun skins. You can then go to the armory and buy those weapons with currency that you've earned through playing the levels and add them to your loadout. 
it gives the game some good replayability, unlocking more weapons to try out as you play. There are also weapon skins you can find throughout the levels that are hidden. So let's talk about the guns and gun handling. You've got a lot of guns in this game. When you're down at the armory you can test different guns out and you can see everything that's there. It's probably nothing compared to something like H3VR, but it's got more than enough variety with all the different types like various pistols, shotguns, submachine guns, assault rifles and sniper rifles. Your hands don't have collisions but the guns do, so when you're actually holding a gun it will collide with other guns and with the environment. You have loads of different attachments you can place and take off the guns on the fly. Things like different sights and scopes, laser sights, foregrips and flashlights. The sights and scopes work great. The scopes in particular are some of the easiest to use in VR. You can adjust the zoom of the scope, change the colour of a red dot or hollow sight, or turn off and on laser sights by placing your hand near it and pressing the trigger. When you first go into the game, it defaults to having all the interactive points on the gun highlight blue when your hand is in the right spot. I personally turn this off because I found immersion breaking, but it can make it tricky figuring out if your hand is in the right place, although the gloves do light up which helps. The holding, reloading and firing of the guns is all good. I would say it's on par with something like contractors with a similar recoil model. So one handed the gun will kick and it's pretty useless at range. Two handed is better but you still want to fire in bursts or use a single fire mode to be accurate. You get infinite ammo so you don't have to worry about ammo management and it uses the tried and tested system of using grip to grab the gun and foregrip and then you use your trigger for ammo and interactions like racking a slide or removing an attachment. The guns sound good as well. They sound powerful and they've got added reverb when you're inside. Enemies are one shot to the head and usually about two to three shots to the chest depending on the gun that you're using. So similar time to kill to contractors. The game uses a full body and arms, but the arms need work. The developers already said that they're working on this, but the hands look a bit shit, and the arms can get very twisted and don't really line up with your real arms well. Something you don't notice that much when you're shooting and focusing on the game, but it could definitely be improved. If this game sounds like something you would enjoy, then even as it is, I think you would have some fun with it, especially with friends, but I would wait for a sale as I think for what's there now is a little bit pricey. The developer recently put out a devlog and they've been running some PvP tests, working on fixing bugs and have said that they want to do a major rework behind the scenes and really want to release the game as polished as possible. In their words, they are optimising the hell out of code, weapon handling, holsters, body IK, maps, combat design, enemy types, co-op and so on. They're looking to add melee, not knives but the ability to smack the enemies with your guns, they want to add more diverse enemy types, boss fights and more interactive elements. They've got two more story missions in the works and with a PvP mode this game could end up being great and I'm looking forward to seeing how the game develops further and jumping back in with my dry mouth in the future. And that's the end of the video. There's this thing called a subscribe button. It's below the video. If you press it, you get good luck. If you don't, then you probably still get good luck. So I guess it's up to you if you want to press it or not. Driver!